We have 350 people working here at the Department of Genetics at the UNC Groningen. These people come from all over the world, so we have many nationalities working here. This department covers the broad spectrum of what is necessary to do future genetic research on a very advanced level. We have so much knowledge. We have everything in the lab available. We have a really unique bioinformatic team. And the department is unique as you compare it to other departments of genetics in the Netherlands because we focus our research on complex disorders. And the clinical implementation in the end is very important. Of course, we have many collaborations as a big department. One that is very important is Lifelines. Lifelines is a prospective follow-up cohort study started in 2006 and it has included so far 167,000 participants living up in the northern part of the Netherlands. For many individuals we have not only the individuals themselves but also their parents and their children permitting us to see how genetic variation is having an effect on disease. We've been able to generate single cell RNA-seq, gut microbiome, nasal microbiome, metabolite data. But another considerable focus point is to also start returning knowledge that we have gained back to the individual biobank participants. For instance, a pharmacogenetics passport, we can also start returning polygenic risk scores to our participants. And what we will hopefully see in the next few years is that by having provided back that type of information is that we really will be able to improve the quality of life we generated a very deep omics data covering genotype, transcriptome, methylation, metabolomics, proteomics. So this offers us a very unique opportunity to, to perform integration analysis to understand how our microbe interact with our genome and environmental factors and contribute to development of complex diseases. One thing that we are focusing on is the development of the Lifeline's next cohort. This is the cohort of parent-baby trios, where we are interested how the gut ecosystem is being shaped during the first year of life, what is the role of bacteria, what is the role of viruses, how are they linked with conditions of the baby self, both in the short term, during the first year of life, but also in the long-term perspectives later in life. What's very important is that we now have been able to build an organ on a chip. In this case, it's a gut on a chip because we are much interested in diseases of the gut. And they will also allow us in future to test therapies for these diseases. As a research group, we initiated our research by studying gut on a chip in the context of celiac disease. Amazingly, these cells seem to organize themselves in a structure that looks biologically very representative of what in vivo is really going on. And we can either transplant the entire immune system of the small intestine or sorted immune cell types that we know are very relevant to disease. For lung diseases, you can apply similar methods to study interaction between immune cells and epithelial layers. We have clinical related research you can think of research on rare diseases, for instance, like rare chromosomal disorders, but also cardiogenetic abnormalities. We now use whole genome sequencing and whole exome sequencing in the neonatal intensive care unit. And we also do that for prenatal cases. In Groningen, clinical genetics is a liaison between the clinic and, uh, and the lab. We do have a very important role in genetic counseling in the prenatal setting. We come in for genetic counseling about the QF-PCR, SNP array and exome sequencing. We start to counsel our patients within a day. The lab is going very fast in generating the data and in the end we can give parents within 10 days the data so they can make their decisions. In only 35% of the cases we don't find an underlying diagnosis and the patients have to decide only on the ultrasound. And we did some research and we found out that in about one third of the cases our patients do decide to continue the pregnancy or not based on our exome data. 
Having a diagnosis for a patient with a rare disorder is extremely important in finding the right treatment, in finding the right course of action. As a parent of a child with a rare neuromuscular disorder, I know how important it is to have this diagnosis. At the beginning, before we knew what he had, he was lying on his bed and he couldn't even lift his arm. We have many rides with an ambulance, went many hospital admissions and we simply couldn't figure out what was going on. He was getting worse and worse. Whole genome sequencing in the end was able to find the positive mutation. We were able to start a proper treatment and within hours he was able to lift and wave his arm around. Now we're a few years ahead and he's actually able to walk around and he's a happy and playful child. For me this has driven me even further in trying to find the cause for many more of these patients. So my most recent work was a tool that's called GADO. And there we use public RNA sequencing data. We integrate this into one big model. And this allowed us to predict for many genes which phenotypic consequences might be associated to this. We were actually able to solve more patients than we could normally do in our routine diagnostic procedures. In future, we want this possibility of genetic diagnosis for all of the patients in our hospital. That Every specialist in the hospital uses genetic diagnosis in their daily care. And this is a project what we call mainstreaming. It will be very difficult to find any other group in the Netherlands that has so many different disciplines in one department. And that is something that is really special about our environment.